Oh, new to this. I'm certainly new to this, doing this. Um, every other time I've done this, I've been in the chamber, been in the committee meeting room. So y'all just going to bear with me. That's all I know to say. Uh, we've got, I'm pulling up my agenda. Give me just one second. Here we go. All right, the first bill that we're going to take up, let me back up. Do y'all have an agenda? I don't want to refer to something that y'all don't have. All right, the, the, so for no. some of you may not know, the staff at the Capitol was uh, prohibited from uh, going to the Capitol last night. They finally got a trooper to take Bart up there, and Bart uh, was able to email me. Uh, and I never – Miss Alice hadn't been there, so I, I – know if it if it got out to everybody or not but we don't have a large agenda we do have a few bills that we need to get through today though so again just bear with me the first bill is house bill 311 this is a pretty simple bill this is a bill that that comes to us from uh, representative scoggins uh had a constituent brought it to his attention uh, would, would not cost us the, the it would be negligible what the state would what it would cost the state but essentially the whole or in our sales tax laws that if a, if a person owns a vehicle in their own name and they want to transfer it to their business, to their LLC or their partnership, uh, they're being charged a tax for whatever reason, a sales tax. And so this would just make sure that a shareholder or an owner of an entity wants to transfer their personal vehicle to their, to the entity that they own. Uh, they don't have to pay that sales tax again. Keep in mind, they've already paid it once. That's an explanation of that bill or any questions. Title sufficient, Mr. Chairman. Seeing none, motion is title sufficient. Do pass on House Bill 311. Um, I'm going to motion reconsider, Mr. Chairman. Does anybody want to vote no? I'm going to do it that way. Huh. Seeing no, seeing no, no votes. Uh, there is a um, motion to reconsider and a motion to table the motion. There we go. All right, the next bill we're going to take up is uh, House Bill 1297. Uh, what we're probably going to do, guys, we may have a floor amendment on some. This, this is, we got a couple of different bond bills, and we want to keep some vehicles alive for the bond process um, as, as the session goes on. House Bill 1297 is one of those vehicles in its current form. This just simply authorizes bonds for the um, – Water Pollution Control Revolving Fund, and that's an explanation of that bill. It's, it's within what they've asked for, usually the same on a yearly basis. Any questions? Seeing none, uh, anybody wish to vote no? Okay. Um, motion is title sufficient to pass. There's no no votes. Is there a motion to reconsider? Gentlemen? Motion to reconsider, motion to uh, reconsider this, this table. Um, can everybody see me okay? Hear me okay? Yes. Just give me a little, I'm not yeah. getting any feedback, so I don't know if y'all hear me or don't hear me. <laughs> I don't know I if I hear anybody or not. Okay, good. You're coming in loud and clear. Thank y'all. Uh, the next bill that we're gonna handle is gonna be uh, House Bill Let's see in a second. I'm going to give us a couple different big bonds. Uh, the, next, the next bill uh, is uh, dealing with the – it's going to be House Bill uh, 1351. It uh, creates the bonds, um, authorizes and issues bonds for, the, uh, for uh, local governments and the rural water systems uh, revolving loan fund. Uh, very similar to the last bill we passed. It's, it comes in at what they've requested and similar to what they request every single year. Any questions? Seeing none, does anybody wish to know? And the motion being title sufficient, do pass. Okay, the motion passes. There's a motion to reconsider and a motion to table. The next bill I'd like to bring up is going to be House Bill 1322. And I would uh, recognize the vice chairman to handle that bill, 1322. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Bart Sperry, our able attorney and myself, we're the only ones in the Ways and Means Committee room today at our beautiful state capitol, by the way, and we're enjoying life. But um, bringing to you today House Bill 1322, and I do have a committee sub, and my apology that we do not have it online yet, but um, I'll explain the committee sub. It simply puts a cap on this for our class two and class three, which is commonly referred to as short tracks, uh, puts a cap, annual cap on this tax credit of $8 million uh, for all of them, not, not each short track, but total for all of them combined. Um, short tracks are all over Mississippi. I think uh, research shows 15 members of this committee have short tracks uh, in their districts. Uh, this le legislation has already passed in Alabama, Kentucky, Georgia, and I believe Oklahoma, and uh, currently have legislation in Arkansas and Louisiana being considered. Uh, this is a 50-50 match, mm -hmm. um, and the short rail would have to spend at least $1 million uh, to, to gain uh, the 50-50 match. The short rail could not do a uh, improvement of $250,000 and expect to get a 50-50 match. The minimum is gonna be 1 million. But we have 1,600 miles of uh, short tracks in uh, Mississippi and uh, 22 uh, current short track uh, rails. But that's a brief explanation of the bill. And again, I will have a committee sub that just puts a, simply puts a cap at eight million in this bill, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. I will be glad to entertain any questions a member has. Got a motion. I have one. Okay. Okay. Any questions, all right, gentlemen? You're recognized. Uh, is, is this funding is or this money is it concerning maintenance? Uh, maintenance it's, and, yeah, and it's maintenance. Expense? Maintenance improvements uh, it includes ties, rails, bridges, new industry track, uh, and customer sightings. Great, thank you. Okay, motion. I have a motion a at the proper time. Okay, do you have an amendment, gentlemen? You talk. Uh, the committee sub. Okay. Right. Yeah, and my motion would be title sufficient, do pass committee sub. Okay, and you, you've explained the committee sub, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, any any other questions? Uh, seeing none, Mr. Mr. Some Chairman? Questions? Yes. I think that is a that is a great idea. And if there's any any uh, error on this, it ought to be on the side of the upside because we we gotta we gotta have these rails. We don't move. Right. We appreciate your endorsement, gentlemen. We all do. Okay, um, guys, are there any any other questions at all? Okay, seeing none, y'all heard the motions. Anyone wish to vote? No. Seeing none, um, motion carries. There's a motion to reconsider and a motion to table. <clears throat> Okay, guys, uh, the next one we'll bring up, uh, we're going to bring up House Bill 1415. This is, these are the bonds. Again, another bond vehicle, but this is the bonds, the requested amount for IHL and community colleges. Um, very similar to the other bond bills that we passed out of committee this morning. And, um, and it it's, comes in at, at basically their requested amounts. So House Bill 1415. IHL and community college uh, bond requests. Are there any questions? Okay, seeing none, motion is title sufficient to pass. Uh, anybody wish to vote no? Motion carries, a motion to uh, motion to reconsider and a motion to table the motion to reconsider. Uh, the next bill, uh, uh, guys, before we do that, uh, I'm going to lean on my vice chairman a little bit, gentleman from TIPA. Where is our legal counsel? Is he there with you? He's supposed to be sitting there with you. Yes, sir. Where's uh, Mr. Bart? Okay. Let Mr. Me, Bart, uh, you speak speak up now if we uh, if we get off on our procedure, okay? Perfect. Okay. Um, the next bill we're going to pull up is going to be House Bill 1416. This bill is what some of you may have heard is the uh, inflex bill. Um, 
my it was my this is this is a bill that that a lot of the economic developers across the state have endorsed behind and have come to us and say it's a better way of incentivizing businesses to come and to come to our state. Uh, it was my full intention to study this bill in depth uh, uh, this week. However, the uh, the weather issues and the technology issues that we have had, <clears throat> along with um, uh, some other issues that have come up, have kept me from being able to spend as much time with this bill uh, as I would like to have this week. We I do I do know that the Senate has passed a, a very similar bill, and so we have a similar bill coming from the Senate. Um, but and so I debated on whether to even bring this bill up this morning to committee. But well, I think what I would like to do on this bill is put a reverse repealer in it and make an amendment to do that. And so that would be the amendment at this time. Any questions on that amendment? Seeing none. Um, any no votes on anybody wish to vote against the amendment? Seeing none, the, the amendment carries. And so the bill ha now has a reverse repealer in it. And so what this would allow us to do, if y'all would let us pass this out, we'll be continue to study this issue. I imagine this is one that's gonna go down to the wire uh, into the session because I my understanding is that the Senate uh, has some uh, some ideas that and, and and this is just this is complicated stuff guys I'm just gonna say it simple as that it's a lot of taxing provisions and, and different code sections involved a lot of different uh, years worth of, worth of incentives at MDA and I just don't want to I don't want to rush into anything with this with this legislation so uh, this this method will allow us to move this bill forward and continue with the process and continue to allow all of us to study it uh, as the session continues. Are, are there any questions about this bill? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Is it any way that we could possibly have a hearing on this bill? Just the, um, you know, our committee so that we can Sorry. get a. Lady, we can do that. We can do that. There's, uh, as I said earlier, there's Senate bills coming over that are very similar. We're yet to take up Senate bills. So when Senate bills come over, we we certainly can can have some further uh, meetings and hearings if the committee wishes to do that. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other questions? All right. Seeing none, the motion is title sufficient. Uh, do pass as amended. Any other questions? Anybody wish to vote no? Seeing none, the motion carries. There's a motion to reconsider and a motion to table the motion to reconsider. Bear with me, guys. One, let me look through my notes. House Bill 1356 is the bill I'd like to pull up next. 1356. Um, and Bart, didn't we, don't we have a, um, we discussed an amendment on that bill, 1356? Yes. Okay. All right. Let me just explain generally what 1356 is, uh, and I'll explain it with the amendment. With the amendment, 1356 would allow, uh, would allow for our depreciation schedule for airplanes, people that are in business in the business of airplanes, and that is their primary business, to follow the federal depreciation schedule. That's, that's simply what that would do. We have, we don't have a lot of aviation companies in the state, but we do have some. And this bill is designed to, uh, to basically attract more because uh, right now we are at a disadvantage um, in our state with other states who allow uh, people in the aviation business to follow the federal depreciation schedule for their airplanes. As y'all know, airplanes are not cheap. Um, and especially when you get up into, <laughs> and the different jet levels, uh, these things are very expensive uh, pieces of machinery. And in my mind, they're really no different than, a, uh, than an expensive piece of machinery that's sitting in a, in a factory somewhere. That's what allows that factory to provide jobs and carry on their business. And, and someone that's in the aviation business is in charge of, of uh, transporting passengers uh, here and there, it's, it's the same process. And so uh, this would allow uh, them to follow the federal depreciation schedule airplane. But there were, some other, there were some other tax incentives that were in there as well. Those were being stripped out by the amendment. And so what would, the only thing that would be left would allow them to follow the, the federal the schedule. Mr. 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 Hold on, Mr. Mr. Reynolds. We're going to get to you. Okay, so we've got, we've got the amendment. Um, we need to vote on the amendment. Um, Y'all heard the explanation. Any questions on the amendment? 
Okay, seeing none. Um, anybody wish to vote against the amendment? Okay, seeing none, the amendment, the amendment carries. Um, Mr. Reynolds, you have a question on the bill? I had a question on the effect of the bill. Now, if you know, agricultural aviation, crop dusters, things like that, would they be uh, given relief in the bill as well? Gentlemen, my understanding is that, is that they is that they would, uh, but I will I will uh, seek a clarification for that to make sure and, and get back with you on it. Well, that'd be most. Okay, thank you. I have to, I have a follow up question for Mr. Samji, if, if I can. Yes, sir. Uh, Representative Reynolds, and I had really the same question because I see language, if you will, if you look at line uh, seven uh, seventy four, and. I don't know if that would exclude them, but it appears to exclude uh, agricultural uh, aviation, if uh, unless they were engaged in foreign or interstate commercial air uh, transportation. I think that's something we can look at, gentlemen, and, and I don't, I don't have that the specifics of that bill pulled up in front of. Me. Hey, Mr. Hey, Chairman, Chairman. Uh, Bart's telling me that's one of the sections that's coming out in the amendment. That that is exactly what I was saying. I, I think. Okay. Thanks, gentlemen, that, that may be part of what the amendment removed is that prohibition. But we can, we'll, we'll check on that. All right, any further questions? Uh, seeing none, uh, the motion is title sufficient to pass as amended. Anybody wish to vote no? Seeing none, the uh, motion carries. There's a motion to reconsider and a motion to table the motion to reconsider. Bear with me, gentlemen, just one minute. Okay, guys, the, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the next bill we want to pull up and, uh, and uh, the last one on my agenda will be House Bill 1364. 1364 <clears throat> is a is a bill that is designed to to move our transportation, our road transportation system further along in this state. Um, it is a bill that that we've worked on now uh, for for uh, the last month or two, trying to put the mechanics of it together. Uh, and essentially, the bill is designed to do a few things. Number one. It, it authorizes the issuance of revenue bonds up to two and a half million dollars to finance uh, road construction projects in this state all the way from Tennessee to the coast. And as a mechanism uh, to be able to pay those revenue bonds, the financing people would be a, a 10, 10 cent on gas and a 15 cent on the diesel gas tax that would only go into effect after a refer statewide referendum. Uh, the statewide referendum in its current form will take place on June 8th, which is the date of the municipal elections currently in this state. And once approved by the voters, it, let me back up. If it's not approved by the voters, the tax would never go on. And, but it, if it is approved by the voters, then the tax would roll on within 30 days after um, certification from the Secretary of State Office of the election. And so that is an explanation of the bill. I do uh, have uh, had every intention of having an, uh, a prepared amendment for today, but with council being unable to get to get to the uh, capital yesterday and having no staff. We're going to have to do the amendments form in a conceptual format. So, uh, one thing that I, that I would like to go ahead and do, I think it makes sense to go ahead and explain the amendment that I have, um, and then uh, once we do that then I'll take any questions. So the first amendment, bear with me, let me get to my notes. And I know council is there with the vice chair at the Capitol taking notes, but I'm gonna go through some of my notes here. Um, and, and again, this would be an amendment conceptually. So I want y'all to listen, listen very carefully. Uh, I've had, uh, let me just, before I go through the amendment, uh, I've been very uh, fortunate to have very, very uh, several and very good conversations with various members 
uh, of this of the committee and also of the House, as well as uh, other members. Uh, I'm sorry, other individuals that are not members of the legislature uh, that are interested in uh, improving our transportation system in the state. And so this amendment comes from uh, from those uh, those conversations that I, that I deem very productive. And so I'm gonna go through it at this time. Uh, the amendment uh, would phase in the gas tax. Okay, so basically this is how it would work. Uh, this is to ease ease the a uh, little burden on our truckers. The truckers have a uh, I've got nothing but positive feedback from the truckers of this state. Some of them have already entered into contracts for fuel and things for this year. And so what this would do is after the if the election if the voters approve the election and approve the gas tax uh, within 30 days uh, of the certification or on or about July 1 uh, of this year half of the tax would roll on. So five on gas, seven on diesel, and then the rest of the tax would be phased in the following January 1st. So another five, another seven, the, the next January 1st. Uh, that's the first part of the amendment. Uh, the second dot part of the amendment is to that we would require MDOT uh, to provide annual updates to the legislature uh, about the status of this program and the status of the projects and the status of the issued bonds. I thought that's an important thing for us to have regular annual updates as to what's going on with this program. Uh, the third part of the amendment is that uh, we would require MDOT to apply for and seek all available um, federal funding sources that could be uh, matched or, or, or contributed toward these projects and whatever uh, non-obligated federal sources that come to the state uh, would be used to assist with these projects. The other, um, the other parts of the amendment, uh, ladies and gentlemen, are to add a uh, stretch of highway, Highway 14, uh, in the east part of the state would receive improvements Highway uh, 61 around Claiborne County would receive improvements uh, consistent with, I think that project was originally in the 1987 highway funding plan uh, and it would, it would complete that project. Uh, the additional uh, portion of the projects are highways, uh, Highway 61 in the south part of the Delta in and around uh, the Vicksburg area and, and, and southward into Highway 27 uh, through Hazelhurst and Crystal Springs to 55. So those projects, those projects would be uh, added to the bill. Um, so that's an explanation of the amendment that I have. Um, I'm sorry, there is one more. Uh, Highway 6 uh, between Batesville and Clarksdale uh, would be removed from the bill. That's, that's also in there. The consultations I had with MDOT the traffic counts, they've actually had a lot of safety improvements on that road over the last several years, new bridges and new other improvements that have been made. And according to MDOT, the, the, that does not justify being four laned at this time. So that's an explanation of my amendment. Hey, Mr. Chairman. And I will take any questions on the amendment at this time. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, council's telling me uh, on your amendment, you left off highway 12, four laning highway from uh, near Interstate 55 through the city of Durant uh, and the city of Kosciuszko. Okay, y'all heard that. That certainly was not my intention, but that's that's uh, through Holmes County uh, and, and Kosciuszko is, would also be, I think maybe that was already in the in the legislation, but there was a typo that needed to be clarified there. So that's, that's part of the amendment as well. Are there any questions on the amendment? Mr. Chair. Hey, Randy. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I, I seem, assuming you named or you amended some specific projects in your amendment, I assume the bill itself has specific projects in it as well. Oh, it certainly does. Yeah. Bill. If you haven't seen the bill yet, okay. it's, been, it's been filed for uh, a week or so now. Uh, but yeah, the first several pages of the bill list the specific projects. And that's that reminds me of an important part. Uh, this The money that will be derived um, from these the selling of these bonds uh, and, and the, the uh, gas tax that would come in to pay off the bonds can only be spent on these projects. The money can be spent on 
uh, overhead at MDOT. It can't be spent on, uh, you know, other side projects or things of that nature. Um, it can only be spent on these projects. And so y'all have heard the amendment. Uh, we may have some more questions on the bill, but let's, let's get past the amendment. Are there any other questions on the amendment? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Could you go back uh, and restate the language about any incoming federal funds that are not obligated? Could you, could you restate that part or tell us what line? I, I can talk about it, lady. I certainly can, but I can't restate okay. it. This is a conceptual amendment and, and I don't, uh, I don't have the exact language uh, in front of me, but I certainly can tell you what it is. Basically, just would require MDOT uh, to seek any any available federal funding uh, that may come into existence or may uh, may be out there uh, for application during the during this program. That's it. And so, and and I think you said that uh, that, and so to to effectuate these. Uh, these uh, projects, not unless they are uh, earmarked for something else, right? That's right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? And seeing none, uh, is anybody who wish to vote against the amendment? Seeing none, the amendment carries. Okay. Now we're back on the bill. Um, there was a, one other thing in the bill that I need to uh, need to mention. Uh, like I told, I think I mentioned that it was up to $2.5 billion worth of revenue bonds uh, for various projects across the state. In the bill's current form, $300 million of, of the money will go toward uh, cities and counties needs across the state. 100, 100 million would go to the counties based on the state aid road formula. 100 million would go into the ERBF fund. Uh, which funds emergency road and bridge needs at the city and county level all across the state, and another hundred million would go to uh, a new a new fund that would be set up. Uh, it would be a grant application process where cities uh, where cities could um, uh, come and make application for various infrastructure projects and receive those grants up to a hundred million dollars. Um, so I think I've explained everything that I. Uh, a general concepts of the bill, and I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, could you tell us about the grant program for the cities? Uh, is there a, a criteria so, for uh, cities, or, or will the rich cities be the ones to get the money and the poor cities? What is the criteria? No, ma'am. Uh, it, it would be based off need. And so you, you remember back in 2018 when we did our our infrastructure had our infrastructure special session and, and really took care of a lot of the city and county needs at that time we also set up the uh, emergency road and bridge fund and we funded it with 250 million dollars that that helped uh, i believe jones county was a was a major recipient of a lot of those funds lady uh, but as part of that erbf program we set up a um, we set up a an advisory committee uh, that currently exists and so this, uh, this municipality grant program uh, would go before that advisory committee uh, and there would be an application, uh, an application process that would be based on need uh, and worthy applications and would be considered by that committee. Uh, we've had very positive feedback from the way that committee has worked and the ERBF fund in general. And so it would be consistent with the way that fund has been treated. All right. Uh, thank you. And of course, now Johns County, you know, we built our own bridges, remember? <laughs> we tried to get our money back, but y'all wouldn't give it to us. <laughs> thank you, lady. <clears throat> uh, any further questions? Okay, seeing none. Uh, the motion is title sufficient, due pass. Cameron. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, legal counsel suggesting that we adopt a committee sub. Okay. Big rewrite. All right, so the motion would be uh, title sufficient to pass the committee sub. sub. Yes. Okay. All right, y'all heard the motions. Anybody wish to vote no? Seeing none, uh, the motion carries. Uh, there's a motion to uh, for reconsideration and a motion to table uh, that motion. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have anything else at this time. Um, Mr. Chairman, before you leave. Yes, sir. Is this bill likely to end up in conference? As most likely, like, likely, what I think is most likely. Gentlemen, you've been uh, you've been here a long time, a lot longer than me, and you know uh, the likelihood of a house, the house coming up with a bill of this magnitude, and the Senate just 
saying, okay, we're going to do it is, is very unlikely. So <laughs> well, I, I got a small highway I want to talk to you about okay. in, uh, in Canton that's, uh, that I think deserves some attention, but I'll, I'll get with you on it. Okay, let's let's talk. I welcome, welcome that conversation. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any questions procedurally or, or otherwise? I will say this, uh, be prepared Monday. Um, a lot of us were out this week, so uh, I expect Monday to be a, a busier than normal day. So uh, look forward to seeing y'all hopefully in person on Monday and hope everybody has a, has a great weekend. Is there a motion to rise and report? 